Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. Today we're going to showcase some of my uh, assortment of Hall of Famers and um, don't have the uh, complete player runs of these players. These are kind of collections that were either getting started or I would just pick up pieces here or there. Weren't really a top priority for me. Uh, I've got a lot of these guys rookies and a few of these are the actual rookies themselves that are not so expensive that I can't keep them here with the rest of the collection. So uh, one card that probably has gotten... Probably shouldn't be keeping it here in the house, but it has gotten quite expensive. And we'll start over here with this Johnny Bench. 1969, his second year. I've got a, it's really actually, it's pretty well centered. It's a pretty sharp uh, six, if you ask me. Had this card raw as a kid and was one of my favorites. It uh, was unfortunately stolen from me. Uh, somebody broke into my house and stole, stole a lot of my old good vintage stuff, but uh that's the good thing about getting older and getting a little pocket money for yourself. You can go ahead and do whatever you want. So I went and bought one of those a couple years ago to make up for the one that was stolen there. And the 1971, very low grade, picked that up for just a few dollars. His uh, 73, a really cool action shot of him catching a pop-up. Looks like he's at uh, playing, is it Candlestick playing the Giants? A couple of Kellogg's there from 74 or 76. Cool 76 card of him there. This catcher gear on. Then uh, 79. Got that in Opeachy somewhere too. A couple of Raleigh Fingers cards. Like the old ones with him in his A's uniform. And then he went over to play for the pa uh, Padres. There's just a 7. Some more 80s stuff. I've got a couple more uh, Reggie Jacksons around somewhere too. Just show these. Of course, I got his rookie, Raleigh Fingers rookie too. Here's an actual Ron Sano rookie. It's a, a miscut. You can see that's really poorly cut. I, I think I wanted to pay, what I pay, like $18 for that back in the day. I meant to get the Santo rookie. Then he got elected to the Hall of Fame right after I started collecting. And his stuff just shot through the roof, uh, you know, with a new surge with him getting inducted. And then it was over for me buying his uh, rookie card in a nice mint grade. There it is, uh, the rub off his uh, 68 All Star. Then a couple Bly Levens. And over here, actually, let's uh, look at my expansive Mickey Mantle collection. Now, I am not a big Mantle collector. I, I'm much more into Hank Aaron and Willie Mays, Ernie Banks, some of those other great sluggers from that era. Uh, Mantle just. Uh, no, I just, I just, it was too expensive for me, right? I'd rather buy, you know, buy a Clemente. Back in the day, you could buy, you could buy a Clemente, you know, and a Banks and a Hank Aaron, all in near mint seven, and for the price of, of the Mantle and the same card. I, and I understand Mantle's popularity. He was the golden child of that era. Played in New York, you know, was the media darling. All the advertising dollars flowed his way. But, uh, not a, not a, uh, a big priority for me for his collecting. Eckersley rookie. Here's an Eckersley uh, Kellogg's rookie from 76. He's actually got a 1975 SSPC card as well. Probably should look into getting that. That's kind of a interesting piece. Here he is, his second year Topps card. Here's a 1980s. Got one Goose Gossage card here, his rookie in a six. A nice Bruce Suter rookie in a in an eight. There's Andre Dawson, rookie. And then the last one I'm going to show, the uh, the Jack Morris. And uh, I'm going to be posting more videos on it. These are just kind of a hodgepodge as I'm going through these boxes. And uh, But uh, once again, everyone, I appreciate your posts, your comments, and I'll talk to you again soon.